Hello, people. We're going to Puerto Plata. And this is where the fishermen load and unload their boats. This is a propane gas station for cars, usually. Hello everyone. This is not going to be a long repair video, but I just want to give an update to our situation with our alternators not working and our raw water pump that we got a new one of. So they've been removed, as you can see here, with all the loose wires. The water pump, I'll have to bring another light in, is right there. And we had the alternators checked and some parts replaced on them they're not working but i want to show you this one in particular this one did not have a voltage regulator and they couldn't find one since we're in the dominican republic um, finding the proper parts for things is a definite issue so what they did was hooked up a voltage regulator for a truck so instead of an internal one it's going to be an external voltage regulator uh, they taped it up like that over top of this heat sink. I hope that's not going to be an issue. I think I might revisit that before I install it. It's already been soldered together. I would have liked to put shrink wrap on that, but I'll make something work. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Grab a flashlight. I've already got the new pump started right there in the light. I just have to put the pulley on it and that will be then functioning and i'm going to hook up the two alternators here one at the top one at the bottom and then i'm going to make new grounding connectors that go to the engine mount is where they had them i might use the same spot if i can get in there but i want to get a better contact there with a better wire and better connectors that's my project for today it's going to be a, a short segment of our video because you're probably all tired of seeing people fixing their boats all the time. You want to watch a professional video on how to rebuild an alternator or something, there'll be better ones for that. But just an update on what is going on here. I peeled back the electrical tape and saw why they put the tape on. The connectors here have holes on them. And instead of putting an electrical connector with a little nut and washer to hold it together, they just soldered them on, which I think is going to be prone to corrosion. So I'm going to have to keep my eye on that because it's already been put on there unless I sweat them off and crimp on some connectors and find some bolts. So I'm going to take a look for some bolts, but taking a look at how they put this together, it's really not too ideal. You can see they soldered this piece on to that connector, and I believe I have a wire that has to plug in there. And these are all soldered on. It's unfortunate. I would have liked to had connectors on there with some bolts. At least then it's removable when there's an issue with it. Okay, an update to what's going on. I installed the alternators according to the pictures that I took so everything matches up exactly how I took it off because there's it's not just a negative and positive wire. There's like eight or nine wires back there as you saw in the earlier clip. And once I put them back on, it was pretty easy to determine them because one has a big yellow label on the back, one doesn't. So I put the one with the yellow label on the top where it's supposed to go and the other one on the bottom, got all the bolts on and went to put the 
the belts on and the belts don't match because the pulleys were the wrong size. One has a large pulley, one has a smaller pulley, one has a higher capacity, one's a lower capacity. Looking back at my pictures I took before I took it off, realized that the whole orientation of how they came off, they can't go back on the same way. On the one, these bolt, these bracket bolts were actually here, and these bracket bolts were actually here. So they both somehow got turned 90 degrees or else the whole pulleys got switched or else the whole backs got switched. And I think they just switched the backs on them. So the one supposed to go on the top is now on the bottom and the one on the bottom has to go on the top. And then they soldered everything together. So that when they put this on here, they soldered all those together and instead of putting wire connectors crimped on with a little nut and bolt. And the same thing here, they just soldered this onto here, which I just removed because I need this connector. I believe that is the tachometer connects onto here. Uh, all the wires inside the engine compartment are cut to size. So I can't just switch one to the other and run the wires to the other. So they have to go back to the right alternator. I'm not an electrician, so I don't want to start completely messing things up by having some things connected to one alternator and some to the other, uh, not the way it came off. I want to at least start off assembling it the way it came off. So I'm going to have to put a, a ring connector on here so that I free up this terminal again because I'm supposed to have a plug. There is also a plug on here, which is now on here because they switched this voltage controller or regulator to this voltage controller or regulator however you word that when they added this truck one i don't know why they wouldn't just replace the one that was broken instead they took the one that was working and put it onto the other one and then switched the other one so a lesson here you know although labor might be less expensive in the dr even though this went to an industrial plant where they do um, fabricating and things. The lesson here is um, they don't exactly do things the right way. Instead of putting wire connectors crimped on with shrink wrap tubing and bolts and nuts to hold things together, they just quickly solder things on to the ring connectors and they just threw all the parts to one alternator to send that one back right away and then took whatever parts were left over on the other alternator and added parts to make that work. Although not the right parts, they said they're parts that will do the job. But now my two alternators are completely mixed up and I'm going to have to do some modifications because it's the only way we're going to be able to get moving again. So yeah, the lesson here, I guess, is don't, don't just tell them to rebuild your alternators, which they didn't do. They were just going to get them working, but they got them working by just mixing up two parts to two different alternators. They're not identical. They might both be blue, but they're not the same alternator. They don't have the same capacity. They don't have the same pulley sizes. They don't have the same bracket orientation. They are both just blue. So yeah, I'm in a bit of a pickle. Um, kind of wishing I just, you know, spent the couple thousand dollars it would be to get two new good alternators, but instead went the route of rebuilding, which they didn't do that. They just mixed parts together to get one to run. So I'm going to keep working on that. All right. Now you can see I got a connector on there and cleaned off the solder and I'm going to attempt installing these now, hopefully in the right orientation. All right, just a quick update to what I've been working on today. Got the alternators in, had to do some modifications, switching things around, making clips, but it's in, untested. A different shop, I believe it was a different shop because we had somebody bring it to another city for us to get made. They made a new shaft for our, what's going to be our spare raw water pump because we ordered a brand new one. So they made a shaft. Apparently they made it the wrong size, so they had to remake it again. And they said that the hole in the pulley was in, was worn out and they're going to redo it. I said, sure, if it needs to be done. Well, they remade the hole and I have no idea how they did it because the hole not only was too small, but it was not even round. So I just spent the last like two hours with a Dremel making the shaft able to fit inside of the pulley's hole where the keyway is. Had to cut the keyway with a hacksaw 
Dremel out the hole using a spare shaft, the old shaft that I have, tapping it in there to look for wear marks and see you know, which where to grind because um, it wasn't a round hole. It was a warped shaped hole. Everything was too small. I mean, I guess better too small than too big because I can't make it smaller. But now when we put our spare pump on, it's going to be really sloppy because they also made the new shaft. The new shaft that they fabricated doesn't even fit in the pulley and that's what we gave them to we gave them all the parts we had so they can put it together and make sure everything fits so we get it all back and not even the shaft fits in the keyway which they made them both and they made the shaft thicker by a half a millimeter than the keyway so i had to take down about 0.6 of a millimeter off of the shaft it's about like an inch deep of a hole I had to grind down this 0.6 of a millimeter all the way around so that's enough complaining I got it done it was not a fun job I thought it would be a nice you know I already paid to have the work done just got to assemble everything today didn't turn out that way I had to fabricate and modify everything that I sent away to be repaired so I don't think I'm gonna be doing that anymore here I'll order new parts from other countries unless I find the miracle of a, a great machine shop but I don't think I'm gonna get any more trades to do any work I don't have to because you know one guy did a refrigerator that works that's great but then the same guy bought two different things to two different shops and they just made a mess out of everything um, I wish I never had those other two jobs done so that's it you know, let's get back to some fun stuff